this is part two of the calculus portion of our aeronautical engineering course. At the end of part one, we determined that the area underneath this y equals x squared curve is equal to the integral of x squared dx. Area equals integral x squared dx, which is x cubed over 3. And from 0 to 1, if our limits of integration are from 0 to 1, we plug 1 in there and we found that the area here in this little portion underneath the curve equals 1 cubed over 3 which is 1 third minus 0 which is 1 third. Okay, well what if x is 2? Well then Let's make our limits of integration 0 to 2. So we plug 2 in for our x spot. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 8 over 3 minus 0, which is our area is 2 and 2 thirds, which is 8 over 3. Okay, that's from 0 to 2. Okay. In other words, all this area under here. Okay, as you see, as x gets bigger, our area gets exponentially bigger. The area from 0 to 3 would be 3 cubed over 3 minus 0. Well, 3 cubed over 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. So that would be the area under here and here and here all the way to zero. As you might have noticed the area underneath this curve is always one-third of the area of the rectangle that this curve sits in. See we have three by nine is the area of this rectangle but yet the area under the curve was nine which is one-third of 27. Okay, and look at the area here where x equals 2. Our area was 2 and 2 thirds, but yet it sits inside a rectangle that's 2 by 4, which is 8. So 2 and 2 thirds divided by 8, that's a third again. Just like it was a third we figured back in part 1 from 0 to 1. Even if you look at 1 half, x equals one half. Well then there's x equals one half. Well one half squared is one fourth. So y is going to equal one fourth. So the area of this rectangle will be one half times one fourth or one eighth. Okay. And we figure the area underneath this curve is one half cubed over three. Let's punch that up and see what we get. 0.5 to the third power equals 0.125 divided by 3 equals 0.04166666. Let's store that. Okay, and our area of our rectangle here is 1 half by 1 fourth, which is 1 eighth, which is 0.125. So divide that by 0.125 equals 1 third, just like the rest of them. Here is the y equals x cubed curve. Notice these curves keep getting lower and lower. If x is 1, well then 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so y will be 1. But if x is 1 half, y is not a fourth like it was with the y equals x squared curve. y is 1 eighth, because 1 half times 1 half times 1 half is 1 eighth. So, Let's look at the area underneath this curve. Here's our, our representative rectangle of area. It's y high. It's delta x wide. We have the same old equation, sum of all these little y delta x's as delta x approaches zero. In other words, as you get an infinite number of these little incremental rectangles underneath this curve, 
it equals the integral of y dx. Well, in this case, y is equal to x cubed, so the integral of y dx is the integral of x cubed dx. And the integral of x cubed dx is x to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1, which is x to the 4th over 4. So if our limits of integration are from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, we'll plug 1 in. 1 to the 4th divided by 4 is 1 4 minus 0 to the 4th over 4, which is 0. So our area under this curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1 is 1 4th. And as you might have suspected, the area under this curve is always equal to 1 4th of the area of the rectangle or square or whatever that this curve sits inside of. So you could do this one. The area under here at x equals 1 half would be 1 half to the fourth power. Let's see what that is. 0.5 to the fourth equals 0.0625. Okay. 0 0.0625, which by the way is 1 16th. Okay, and the area of this little rectangle that this curve sits inside of is 1 half by 1 eighth, which is 1 16th. Let's see. Oh yeah, this was, the area on the curve was 0 0.0625 divided by 4. Okay. Right by 4 equals that, which is 1 16th divided by 4. That's 1 64th. You hit the 1 over X button, makes a 64. Okay, and then divided by 1 16th. Okay, we're going to divide by 1 16th. That's the same as multiplying by 16, so times 16 equals 1 4th. And that might be a little confusing the way I pulled that last trick, but anyway, the the area under this curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1 half was 0 0.0625 over 4, which is 1 64th, wasn't it? And the area of this rectangle is 1 16th, and 1 64th is 1 fourth of one sixteenth. So with our limits of integration being from zero to one, our area under this curve is one fourth. But what if we make our limits of integration zero to two? What would they be? Okay, we plug 2 in for x, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16 divided by 4, so that'd be 4. What if our limits of integration are from 0 to 3? Notice this curve just skyrockets. It's steeper than the other curves that we've looked at. It dips down lower between 0 and 1 than the x squared curve, or the x, or y equals x curve, which was a straight line. It dips down lower the bigger the number of the exponent on our x, when y equals x to the something, the bigger that number is, the more this curve dips down before it comes up to the x equals 1, y equals 1 point, but the more it skyrockets straight up. So when we integrate to a number beyond 1, we start getting larger areas. We get smaller areas from 0 to 1, but larger areas after 1. For instance, from 0 to 3, that would be x to the 4th over 4, integrated from 0 to 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81 over 4 equals 20 and a fourth. Notice these numbers are a little bigger than the numbers that we got from, our, from the area under our y equals x squared curve. At 2, we got 2 and 2 thirds for the area under the y equals x squared curve. Here we're getting 4. At 3 we got 9 for the area under our y equals x squared curve. Here we're getting 20 and a fourth. 
here is the y equals x to the one half curve or x to the 0 0.5 what is x to the 0 0.5 well that's the square root of x so the square root of 1 is 1 so if x is 1 y is 1 the square root of 1 half is 1 let's see the square root of 1 half is 0 0.707 so 0.5 to the 0.5 equals 0 0.707106781. We just rounded off to 0 0.707 there. Okay, the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. As you can see, the area underneath this curve is a lot more than the area under our other curves that dip down. So let's see what it is. The area equals the integral of y dx and we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 first off let's say what y is y is x to the 1 half so x to the 0.5 dx so what is the integral of x to the 0.5 dx well it's equal to x to the 1.5 over 1.5 and if our limits of integration are from 0 to 1, then we plug a 1 in here, 1 to the 1.5. In other words, 1 times the square root of 1, which is 1, divided by 1 and a half, minus 0 over 1 and a half. So we have 1 over 1 and a half, which is 2 thirds. Remember how our y equals x squared curve looked kind of like that? Well, here's our y equals x curve. It was a straight line. And the area under our y equals x squared curve, you remember it was one-third. And the area under this y equals x to the 0.5 curve is two-thirds. And halfway between one-third and two-thirds is one-half. As you can see, on this y equals x to the 0.5 curve, you have x equals 1 fourth, y equals 1 half. But over here on the y equals x squared curve, you'll have x equals 1 half, y equals 1 fourth. Okay, for every point here, the whatever its x-coordinate and y-coordinates are, you'll have a corresponding point where the coordinates flip-flop. Instead of one-fourth, one-half, you have one-half, one-fourth. So the area in between here equals the area in between here.